Welcome to our lecture online. Now let's take another look at the same problem. We're trying to find the quantum number of a helium atom inside a box, 10 centimeter on each side, at room temperature, 298 Kelvin or 25 degrees Celsius. So what we're going to do here is we're going to use the result we got from video number 37, where the quantum energy of a particle is equal to the quantum number, or what we're looking here, yeah, for the quantum number that we're looking for, squared times pi squared, h bar squared divided by 2m times the volume to the negative two-thirds power. So you go back to that video and say, yeah, that's the equation we derived. So what we need to do now is we need to solve this equation for the quantum number, and then we need to find the energy of that particular particle in that state, and of course divide by the right side of that equation. All right, first the Quantum energy is 3 halves kT. K, of course, is the Boltzmann's constant. T is the temperature in Kelvin. When we calculate that, we get this many joules, 6.169 times 10 to the minus 21 joules, which is the quantum energy for a helium particle in that box. So now we take the denominator here. So we have pi squared h bar squared divided by twice the mass and the volume to the negative two-thirds power. So pi squared times here we have Planck's constant squared, of course, h bar means Planck's constant divided by 2 pi, so in the denominator we have to have 2 pi squared, twice the mass of a helium particle, this is the molar mass in kilograms, 0 0.004, divided by Avogadro's number, to get the mass of a single helium atom. And then we, the, we multiply that times v to the minus two-thirds, essentially, that would be the length squared in the denominator, and then we get this result, 8.264 times 10 to the minus 40 joules. We then divide the numerator by the denominator, we take the square root, and we get this result as the quantum number of the helium atom inside that box at room temperature, 2.73 times 10 to the 9, and if you go back to the previous video, you'll find out we got the exact same result using the Broglie wavelength. So you can see there's that commonality, doesn't matter which way you try to derive the quantum number, you always should come up with the same number as we did here. So at least that gives you a little bit of an idea how quantum number does have a real meaning in the real world like this. And that is how it's done.